Hey everyone, this is Eva Hutchins coming at you from CTC's Enrollment Center um, here at the Central Campus. So we just want to go over some information about registration for Fall 21, give you some information about that, advising, answer any questions you might have. Um, so um, I'm the Associate Dean of Enrollment Services here at CTC, so I, we have all of the um, advising um, happening here on campus under my supervision. So um, there's a lot of different offices you can reach out to, um, a lot of different ways you can go through the advising process. You don't have to do everything through a face-to-face -face traditional appointment. We've got lots of different options. So I'll be going over all of that throughout the presentation today. Um, first of all, if you're planning on being here on campus for the fall 21 semester, just let me say welcome back. We're so excited um, to see students on campus again and have been seeing that throughout the summer. Um, which has been awesome. So um, if you're a returning or continuing student, just know that we are so excited to see you again and, and have you back on campus. If you're a new student, welcome. And we so appreciate you joining our, our community here at CTC. And we are just as excited to see you all as well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because most of what I'm going to be doing today is showing you guys about registration and then um, the information for advising. So I'm going to start with registration because I know that's where everybody um, hopefully is, is ready to go and excited to register for those fall classes. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen um, and get the website up. Okay, hopefully y'all are seeing my um, uh, uh, CTC website. This is our homepage, ctcd.edu. And so you're going to see lots of information that you can get to from here. You'll see scrolling pictures in the middle with information about different opportunities and events. And um, the first thing I want to show you guys is um, what we have on, on tap here for the fall. So what, what options do you have for classes? So the best, this, this is the, the best website. Um, so under the academics tab, um, you can see under instructional departments, there is a class formats link. So when you click on that class format, this tells you all of your options for the fall um, semester. This information lives in many different places throughout the registration process itself, which I'll be showing you in a moment. Um, but I like the conciseness of this um, website and it tells you exactly what's available. Um, and so we do have on campus courses, as I mentioned, so this would be a specific face to face um, class. So on a specific day, a specific time. And um, you'll complete additional assignments and studies on your own, and you might be using online resources, but you would be going in at a specific time um, on campus and to hear that lecture from your instructor. We also have blended, which is a hybrid of that on campus um, experience, as well as additional coursework online outside of the classroom. And so those courses are available as well. So that's a great option for students who may not have the time to spend two days a week on campus. So you might only come one day a week on campus um, and the rest of your lecture time is online. The on-campus courses, just as a general note, most of the time those are two days a week. So um, we'll, I'll be showing you how to look at the class schedule here in a moment and we'll get into the, some of those specifics. Um, two other options that we have are listed as the real-time virtual. So this is um, the classroom experience, but from home. So you do have a specific day and time um, that's scheduled when you sign up for those types of courses, but you log into that class lecture from home um, from a link that your instructor provides. So it is completely virtual, but you do have that face-to-face -face connection um, through that virtual environment with your instructor. Again, everything is um, completed from, from home or wherever you, you're um, having your internet connection. Um, our traditional online classes are also available, um, those we have always had. And so this is 100% online. You don't have to commit to a specific time or day to come to campus or to be logged in. This allows you to complete your assignments more at your own pace. Um, watch for deadlines in these types of classes. There may be a specific deadline, say the instructor says, you've got to finish week one homework by you know, Sunday at midnight or whatever the case may be. So you've got to make sure you meet that deadline, but you can do that within that window at whatever time works for you. So those are super convenient for the busy student. Uh, maybe you have a, a job that you're going to as well um, that allows you that flexibility. So again, I just want to show you from our homepage, um, if you need to read this information, go hover over the academics tab and go under 
instructional departments to class formats, and it will bring up this page here. All right, so um, just that's a great resource to see everything in a concise way and like, hey, I forgot what she said about, you know, those virtual classes. Um, you can go read about it right here and, and see all the information. All right, so I'm going to go head back to our homepage and our homepage. Um, again, you can get to everything from here, but I wanted to show you and actually walk you through the registration process. And so I do um, want to log into our student portal and show you from the beginning how to log in and then how to search for classes and give you some tips and tricks for all of that. So under the student tools page, you'll see um, most of your most common links and logins as a student under this um, tab. So when you hover over that and go down to web advisor, you're going to be able to log in. So I'm gonna click the login here at the top right. And then I'm going to log in as a student. I have a friend here at CTC who's let me log into her account as a student. And I'm going to get that done. If I type that password in correctly. And it's thinking. All right. So once we get to the student menu, you're going to see the same information. So under the blue students tab, you'll click on that. Um, this information gives you uh, this main landing page here gives you some great um, information about financial aid payment and just general announcements to students. So you can take a uh, look at that when you log into your account, uh, but it is important to notice. Um, fight for financial aid, those dates of your class ranges. Financial aid only pays for classes that start and end within the term dates listed below here at this information. So you can come take a look at all of that. And then um, there's payment information, the business office, and then um, just information about the last day to register and, and whatnot. And so that's all great information and that's available to you from this page. Once you click on students, it's right there. You can also see your information for your account, um, your financial information, uh, but most of your information is going to live right here under Eagle Self Service. So that's going to be the next link you would click to start this registration. So once you click Eagle Self Service, it actually opens a new page. And so this has the same information and eventually uh, we will move to where you log in straight to here. Um, that beginning part will, will, will move, uh, move away from what you see. So you'll log in straight here. So this has a lot of information for you. It's going to have banking information, tax information, your financial, and then student planning. Student planning is where all course registration activity takes place. So you want to click on that if you're ready to register for classes. So once you click on student planning, you're going to see two different things. You're going to see go to my progress and that's going to show you your degree plan. If you're degree seeking at CTC, say you're under our math program or mathematics, it's going to show you every class that you need to take within your program. And if you have any questions about that, um, there's resources available to you. If you have questions and you're not sure what you're seeing, what does it mean? Um, I'll be showing you all of the academic advising options. And so that will show you how you can get to that information. Um, the next step, step two, is to go to plan and schedule. So if you know what class you're ready to register for, you can click on that. And that's going to take you up here to this search for courses to your calendar. If you've already planned courses, they would show up here on the side on the left. Um, but if you haven't um, searched for classes, you can click on the search for courses and go straight in. Again, there's some information here. Um, that gives you a lot of great information about just the registration process, um, notes, etc. Um, again, the financial aid disclaimer about payment um, and then information to students. Um, so uh, you just make sure you want to, you know, always have a, a look at that information to make sure nothing's changed or um, to check on those dates for financial aid. All right. So let's say um, you were going to search for a history class. You were going to take U.S. history. So you're going to take history 1301. You can type that in and hit the enter key. And then that's where it comes up where you can actually filter and look for specific information. I always tell students you must use filters to make sure this process is as easy as possible. Um, filters are your friends. Don't be scared of them. Uh, we like filters. 
So let's say you were looking for a central campus classroom course and you wanted to make sure you were looking for the right format. Um, we had already gone over those formats. There's two different types of classroom formats. There's full, full classroom and then there's the hybrid. So um, to see those classes, you wanna click on your campus. So if you're here at central campus in Colleen, that would be central and then the fall term. Once you do that and click the at least two filters, um, that's when I say you've got some information. If you want to do more, if you really know your day of the week or you know an instructor, you can pick that as well. But for example purposes, I'm going to use at least two filters through this process. So here you can view available sections. You'll simply pull that um, gray bar down um, by clicking on it, and then you'll be able to see the options. Um, so let's just take a look at this. Um, one thing I always point out is this thin gray box around the information. That's where you want to look and keep your eye in when you're looking at one class information. Um, it's easy to kind of click on this thinking, um, click on this uh, second step two here and think it's for the class above. Um, so just make sure you, you keep that gray box outline in your periphery and then that's the information that you're looking at for that class. So this particular class runs from August 23rd to December 10th. It's on Monday, Wednesdays, 9 to 1020. And um, it does say the central campus, um, building 208, room 113, and it is lecture. So this means it's completely online, uh, excuse me, completely classroom. There is um, no blended nature to it. If it was blended, it would say online blended. Um, the instructor is um, Dr. Carpey. So um, with this information, you can say, hey, um, that is a great class, great instructor, but that time doesn't exactly work out for me. Um, so maybe you go down to another class and you say, here is another one, and it's Monday, Wednesdays, 1030 to 1150. Oh, that time works. So you just have to look at it and plan out and see what works for you and your schedule. Once you've selected that, um, we'll go through that in a minute and, and walk you through actually registering for it. Um, I'm going to keep scrolling down. Um, all of these are lecture because uh, the class location hasn't changed. Um, so I wanted to go down, see all the way down here. This is the first online blended. So um, you would have class information that would be slightly different um, because part of it would be online. So here's, here's another one. Um, this one is on Saturdays. And it's blended, so there would be time you spend online um, completing coursework, um, but it is on Saturdays. Um, and this one, the dates are different. It's 827 to 1016, so it's only eight weeks, so it's different than the others. Um, so just make sure you look at all that information when you're registering so you can see um, what you're doing, what you're getting into. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these sections and add it to the schedule. Once I do that, it comes up with kind of like a confirmation dialog box and it gives me more information. It tells you a course description. It has a link to the bookstore and it tells you um, the instructor's email address here. It has, also has the same meeting information as well. So once you click add section, all you're doing is planning. Um, see, it says there's a green status bar that says history 1301 has been planned. Um, registration is a two-step process. So the second step is to always go in and confirm your registration. The first step, all we did was plan. Once you've planned a class, um, you can go up to the academics bar here under the logo, and you can say register for classes. That's going to take you back to that main page we were at initially um, that has the calendar. You can see the classes here are listed in kind of a beige brown color. And they fall on the days based on the day and time um, that that class was scheduled. So it's Tuesdays and Thursdays starting at 1030. So that's where it falls on the calendar. Once you've seen the class information again, you can confirm. Um, you can click register here and that will register you for that individual course. If you have multiple courses selected on your plan and you want to pick them all up at the same time and register for, say, four classes all at once, you can simply click the register now at the top of the calendar and that would pick everything up at the same time. So um, that is the registration process. 
and you would want to um, go ahead and complete that and go through that process. If at any point you receive an error or a block, um, you can always reach out to us. So I'm gonna go ahead, since I've shown you how to register, um, I haven't heard anybody mention a question come through. So I'm gonna go ahead and move forward to um, your points of contact. Make sure you log out of both screens when you log out of your student account. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and show you um, another way to register. Uh, I'll show you our points of contact in a moment. But if you do have issues registering and there's a block and we tell you you need to submit a form, um, forms are submitted through eTrieve. So I'm going to show you how to get to that. So when you go on to your student tools, um, WebAdvisor was one the first link, but student forms is listed as well. That will take you to eTrieve. Um, I'm going to go ahead. It'll take you to a login screen. You'll need to log in. Um, once you're there, uh, uh, once you're there, um, the forms for registration, I'm going to show you really quickly. Um, and they live under the forms. So just start typing registration. And you'll see it pulls up by keyword. And so you'll see Texas and distance learning registration. So for any Texas classroom course or for any online course, um, this is the form you can fill out. When you're a student at CTC, your ID will populate and then you'll fill in the rest of the information. Um, your ID and your name will populate. Um, since I am not a CTC student, it doesn't populate my ID number. You'll fill in your phone and your email and then you'll choose your class information. So let's just say um, you have to uh, you have to select everything from um, starting at the beginning. So start with term, choose fall, and then choose your location. So let's say you were trying to register for a an online class, um, that would be under distance learning, um, but you were having issues and you couldn't add it on your account. So let's just say it was accounting twenty three oh two. Um, so. We selected fall, we selected online by choosing distance learning, and then we pulled the class. Now we have to select our section. So this tells you the start and end date. So let's go ahead and choose that August start date. And I apologize, I know it's really small. Once you select everything, you can say add course for registration. So you can see it picked that class up here under courses to register. I believe you can add up to four classes so you can keep going on this list. And um, if you accidentally add one that you didn't mean to, you can remove it. Once you're done adding courses, um, go ahead and remove, uh, review the um, disclaimers. Um, it does let you know that it's manually processed and that it, um, whatever's available at that time will be processed as long as it's still available. Um, so as long as the seat doesn't get full, the class doesn't get full with seats, um, they will go ahead and register you. If you're choosing a science class, you have to go ahead and choose the lecture and the lab. And once you click send, um, uh, you're, you want to go over this um, uh, disclaimer here. Um, but our records office, our central records registration is listed um, here in the destination. And you would go ahead and hit submit to send that to them. Okay, so that is our main um, registration form. Um, I believe a chat came in when I'm sharing my screen. It's difficult to see the chat, but let me see if I can find it. Oh. Bruce, can you send me another chat? So I sort of. Yeah, the, the, the question was do we have to use eForms and WebAdvisor to register or one or the other? No. Um, so eForms would just be if you are un unable to register on WebAdvisor. So if there was a okay. block on your account and you couldn't add the class that you wanted, this would be an alternate way to register. But by no means do you have to do both. If you can process registration through WebAdvisor, that is the preferred, um, the preferred method. Right. But if I didn't make that clear earlier, I do apologize. But this is just an alternate. Um, sometimes there's an issue like um, accounting 2302 has a prereq. So um, you have to complete 2301 before you complete 2302. So if you're transferring in and you've completed that with another college, but you haven't submitted your transcript to us yet, you could um, fill out this form, attach a transcript, see you can um, add an attachment here at the bottom. 
you could attach your transcript for review. You could send it to the records office. They would have it reviewed. And um, as everything went through, you would be able to register. But without your transcript being officially on file, that would be one of the examples of not being able to register on WebAdvisor. So that's why you would need to use this option so that you could get us that documentation. And that can happen for various reasons. Um, uh, or um, I'm trying to think of other ones. Um, Mostly it's prereq issues that we get registration forms through this method. So um, as long as there's no prereq or you've met the prereq, as long as it's on file, you would be able to register through your student account. Um, but if you have a block and it says it won't allow you to register, then feel free to um, use this method. All right, thank you, Bruce. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and move back over to our webpage now. Um, so, that was uh, registration through WebAdvisor, and as an alternate, if needed, you could submit an electronic form to us through eTrieve. Um, so if you do get it through um, the registration process or a question comes up and you're not sure who to reach out to, or if you're not quite ready to register and you need um, some additional guidance um, through the advising department, um, that's what I wanted to talk to you about next. So I'm gonna go ahead and go under students and more resources, you'll click on that page and you can see academic advising. So these are all of the options for um, advising offices here at CTC. So I'm gonna go through the offices first. Our first office is for local students here in Colleen, Coppers Cove, Parker Heights, Belton, Temple. If you're here locally and you want to come in and see us, you can set up an appointment. Um, you can email us and you can call us. Um, we also have live chat um, here for Texas students. So any student here in the local area, if you need to reach out to your advisor, this is your office here. Um, make sure when you reach out to us through email um, or a phone, if you have to leave a message, to include your full name and CTC ID or date of birth. If we don't know who you are, we all, any time to answer a question, um, we have to look at your student record. Um, most questions that students ask are, are not generic enough to, um, to warrant, a, a, you know, an answer without looking at your record. So if you just call and say, hey, why can't I register for this class, but don't tell us who you are, um, we unfortunately can't tell you why you're unable to register for that class. So um, make sure if you do reach out to us to expedite the process, include your, your full name um, that's on your account and provide your CTC ID. If you don't know that, that's fine. Um, you can include your date of birth and we can look it up that way. So um, make sure you're giving that information. For appointments, um, it is peak registration time and our appointments, um, we are by appointment only right now. Um, if you want to see an advisor, you have to book an appointment to be able to do so. You cannot walk in and, and see an advisor um, just by walking in and waiting. Um, but our appointments do, um, we have them scheduled out for two weeks at a time. Um, that's just to allow students um, the flexibility to make an appointment, but not to forget about it. So we don't schedule, you know, six months in the future. Um, so you can schedule for the next two weeks. Every day, a new slot of appointments is available for, you know, two weeks from that day. Um, we do offer appointments, two methods, virtual or face-to-face. Virtual would be kind of like this. We would be using our, our cameras and um, WebEx. And so you would, if you book an appointment in that way, um, within 24 hours, you're going to get a confirmation link that has the link to click for, a, excuse me, a confirmation email, which has the link to click your, um, to your appointment. So if you book an appointment for next week um, today and you get an email tomorrow, that link is for the time of your appointment. So say you booked an appointment for Friday at 9 a.m. That's when you would go click on that if it was a virtual appointment. Virtual is great um, it, if you're not wanting to, you know, get out of the house or don't have time to come up here. Um, it allows you that flexibility to still meet face to face um, and not have to um, uh, worry about being on campus. Um, it also allows you to include other people if you are wanting to have, you know, like um, a family member or someone sit in with you um, if you're not, if you're new to the process and you're a little nervous. Um, it allows that flexibility to have a, a guest with you, whereas in the face-to-face -face appointments, only the student is allowed in the back um, of the, uh, in the office with the advisor. 
um, for the appointment. We, we don't allow guests um, at this time. So make sure if you're needing that, that you book that virtual appointment. But because it's peak and there's a lot of students and we have limited advisors and slots of appointments, you may not find anything when you're going out to that um, to that website for that day. Um, or you might see that it's two weeks in advance or, or whatnot. So what we want to make sure everyone understands is that um, you don't have to have an advising appointment to be advised. Um, you can email us um, during peak time. <clears throat> excuse me. During peak time, our response time is usually within 24 to 48 hours. Um, uh, as the, the closer we get to registration and the more students contacting us, it's going to probably be the 48 hours, but we will respond to your email within that time frame. So that's that's always our goal. I'm going to grab a quick drink of water here. One second. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, if that appointment that you really needed for a specific time wasn't available, please reach out to us through email immediately and we can get everything going for you. Um, you can also call um, when you call us here at this um, number here, the 1226. Um, you're going to talk to our, our assistants um, here in the office. The advisors are busy with appointments, but what they will do is give your information to an advisor for them to return that phone call. So they're going to call you back that day um, or within 24 hours. So if you're wanting to speak to somebody on the phone, that's absolutely possible. Um, and you'll just call in and give us your information and they will give you a call back. So um, that's how I uh, wanted to kind of explain how appointments are working right now and the information about peak time. It's a little bit um, difficult right now. If you went to the website, you might not find something at the time you exactly wanted, but don't despair. Please, please reach out to us through email or live chat or through phone. Um, and then another option for you is um, students who are outside of the area or not here locally, um, or a student who maybe works during the day. Um, any student can, can reach out to Eagles on call. Um, they are available 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. So they're a little bit different on their time frames. So if you are working all day, um, you know, Monday through Friday and you get off work at, you know, six o'clock and we're already closed here at Central Campus um, locally, then you would want to reach out to Eagles on call. Their email account is listed here and their phone number is the 526-1296 because they're open until 11 p.m. Monday through Friday. Oh, and as a reminder, um, Fridays um, during the summer, we were closed. That is now over because we are in August. I can't believe it's already August. Um, so just remember, um, if you've heard that we were closed on Fridays, we're now reopened on Fridays as well. Um, so uh, you would uh, put this information, um, you, you could have this information if you needed to reach out to them. They're available through phone and email and um, they can do the advising process um, just the same. Again, if you reach out to us, if you have to leave a message on a voicemail or if you email us, please, 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 please include your name and your CTC ID or date of birth. We, we won't be able to answer your question quickly if you um, don't provide us that information. Um, if you are a student who is going through one of our um, career center um, programs in the industrial technology or office technology departments, um, your advising center is over in that um, location and they are available through phone and email or by um, setting up an appointment. And you can set up an appointment with them through their email account. Um, if you are an international student, um, you're probably already working with Ms. Lopez, Ms. Rebecca Lopez, our international um, advisor over here. And so her information is listed as well. And you can also schedule an appointment through email with her as well. So I wanted to provide that information about where our, our information lives for um, each advising office, as well as you know a little bit of information about registration and whatnot. Um, Bruce, I think I saw another chat come through um, and I missed what it said. And while I'm sharing the screen, I'm gonna keep this screen open in case I need to show anybody else anything else. Um, okay. yeah, I don't think there was a chat. I've been putting in the uh, emails and contact information thus far. Thank you. And I think that's the only chat that I've noticed here. Okay. So if I see one, I will definitely alert you to it. Okay. Well, two other things, and this popped up right here on this picture right now. So new student orientation is coming up this week, the 5th, and as well, August 19th. 
those are virtual. If you're a new student um, or if you're a returning student and you feel like you might have need some of that information again, that's provided at new student orientation. That's a great event. I'm going to see if I can get that picture to show up again while I'm talking about it. Um, so new student orientation is something we definitely highly encourage you to register for and attend. Again, it's virtual right now. Um, hopefully next year we'll be able to offer that in person, but it's a great event, whether it's in person or virtual, I highly encourage you to register and attend that, that um, session, one of those sessions, if you're a new student. Um, and the other thing I wanted to plug while I was on here was our open house um, event coming up on Saturday, August 14th. It's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's going to be a lot of wonderful, great activities for, for you as a student, your family, just to come view our campus. It's beautiful. If you haven't been out here, it's, it's a beautiful campus. Um, and um, maybe visit with an academic department if you aren't quite sure what area you want to study, or if you're wanting to meet with admissions or advising, we'll be here as well. And um, I just think the open house event is going to be wonderful, and we really want to see you guys out here. So um, Monday or excuse me, Saturday, August 14th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I think Bruce just put out the link for that event as well, where you can find out more information. And here's wonderful timing. Here's the picture for open house. <laughs> awesome. You can click on the more resources there and that'll take you to the. Awesome. Here we go. There you go. That's so the link I just put out there. So it kind of gives you guys an idea of all the events that are scheduled and all the activities and uh, the things that Eva mentioned as far as if you need help with registration, if you need to talk to an advisor or whatever, or, or get a tour of the campus housing, all of that will be done Saturday, August 14th. And the first 100 students will get a free t-shirt. Our yes. first, 100, first 100 registered um, folks that come to that event will get a free t-shirt. So make sure you register for it. It's going to be awesome. Um, so yeah, this link has um, going to tell you a lot about the different uh, options for activities. It's going to be it's going to be wonderful. I've heard a bit about what some of the other areas aside from myself are doing, and it sounds fascinating. If I wasn't um, going to be here seeing students, I would totally be out there um, seeing what's going on. So Bruce, I'm going to rely on you to take lots of pictures to show me. Oh, no, uh, definitely, I will. The, all the academic departments are are planning some kind of fam mm -hmm. family friendly games and activities yes. to win prizes and this and that. So there's going to be something going on at the majority of the buildings across campus for Beautiful. everybody. I'm excited. Not to mention food, music, uh, and a Thanks, bounce house right. and a rock climbing yeah. wall. So <laughs> tons of things to do. Yeah, just yeah. a little bit. Awesome. Well, if there haven't been any other questions, um, I went through and you know what I had listed that I wanted to talk about. So hopefully that was a helpful tool. Um, this information will be recorded. It has been recorded and will be put on our YouTube channel. So um, if you if I went through something and you needed to refer back to it, you could go back and look at that section uh, as far as registration and then um, uh, definitely reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, if you're not sure where you are in your degree plan or there's a, um, you looked at your degree progress and web advisor and you're like, I have a question about this section. I'm not sure what this means. Reach out to your advisor, give us your information and we can hopefully clarify that for you in a timely manner and get you on track. So um, that's all I had, Bruce. I'm going to go ahead. Yeah. And... yeah, I don't see any questions in my end of the chat. Jennifer, do you see anything in Facebook? Anything that came through on one of the other platforms? Or about that, anything in Discord or Twitch? No, I didn't see any. Thanks, Jen. Mm -hmm. Anything on Discord or Twitch, Babette? Apparently not. Nothing here. Okay, great. So yeah, we're we're clear on questions. And as Eva said, this uh, this has been will be transferred over to YouTube. It won't be today since our videographer is out today, but tomorrow it'll be available on YouTube. So as Eva said, if there's something that you missed or need to review some of the information, it will be available at your disposal and, and at your leisure on uh, YouTube. You can stop and play, stop and play as much as you need to, and uh, and get the information that you need. And as Eva said, we put the phone numbers in chat. You can reach out to us if if you need us. So any last words of advice or or encouragement, Eva? Um, just. Uh, take a deep breath if you're a new student. Um, uh, going through the registration process, um, one of the things I, I tell students is first time's the hardest kind of philosophy. Um, once you do it every semester, you'll get used to it. And so, um, if you're in that if you're in that situation, just persevere and and ask questions and let us help you. Um, we are happy to help you through that process. And then as you get more comfortable, you'll be like, 
I'm a pro at this. I totally got this. And you'll just be handling that every semester or, and we'll be like, hey, don't you need this anymore? Um, but just keep persevering. If you're a returning student or if you've taken a break due to COVID or anything like that and you're coming back, um, just welcome. And just know if there's any resources you need and you're not sure where to find them, reach out to us and we will help find those resources for you. Um, you can do it. It's a little bit, um, I know sometimes it can be difficult to come back after a gap. And so we just encourage you to persevere through that process and just know um, we're all here rooting for you and we'll help you with whatever we can. Um, yeah. so, so don't don't forget to reach out. And um, the only other plug I'll put in is your instructors that you're going to have this semester, um, whatever department they are. Um, I've worked with very, uh, you know, with so many of them and they are all wonderful. Your instructors are going to take care of you. So um, enjoy the classes and, and it's going to be a good semester. Yeah, and my only other uh, tidbit to add to that would be if you get stuck along the way in the registration process or not sure, reach out to us. That's what we're here for. We yes. want to help you, so please don't feel I can't do this or I'm going to put this on hold because I don't know what I'm doing. No, just reach out to us. Use that email. Use that phone number that we provided, and someone in the Evans Department will be more than happy to help you out because, again, that's why we're here. So Yes, that is so true. Thank you. Certainly. And aid we have one of these sessions coming up on uh, Tuesday that would be the 10th at 10 a.m. Uh, the financial aid folks will be providing a session like this so if you have questions about financial aid tune in then on Thursday the 12th we'll have a session like this on veteran services so if you're a veteran and you need to talk about your educational benefits through the military tune in there at 10 a.m. on August 12th and then on an academic note, we will have a, a session on this on EMT paramedic program. So if that's a field that you're interested in, tune in on the 11th of August at 10 a.m. and you get information and talk to the new EMT director and ask questions that uh, you might have about the program and he'll be glad to answer them for you. So, so we've got a few of these CTC live sessions coming up, which will help. And as Eva said, the new student orientation for those who are new students will be very beneficial. We have the first one scheduled this Thursday, August 5th at nine o'clock. And if you're unable to do that one, we'll have a second one on August 19th at 9 a.m. So please go to the registration page, which the link we put in the in the chat there and, and sign up for those and, and get more than enough information for you to be successful here at CTC. So, all right. Absolutely. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Eva. We appreciate your time and thank everyone for joining us today. And we'll see you on the next CTC Live. Sounds good.